Hey guys, this is Harjit here. Welcome to Spark Streaming Tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed different videos in this tutorial and it has been useful for you. If you have any feedback or any comment, please post it in the comment section. Please also subscribe to the channel and share these videos with your friends. Let us start with today's topic. Today's topic is uh, uh, understanding the basics of Spark Streaming. So let us start with this. Let us first understand what is DStreams. So we know that uh, uh, stream is nothing but a continuous flow of events. So there are a lot of events that are coming continuously one after another. That continuous flow of events is called a stream. Now, if I say that uh, uh, I'm going to take those events which I am getting uh, and uh, after a specific interval say 10 seconds so that inter interval is called batch interval so after every 10 seconds I'll take all the events which have uh, uh, which I have received in those 10 seconds and process them together uh, then you know it becomes possible for me to think that uh, continuous set of events are coming. I take all the events which are coming in that 10 second window and I process them. Uh, that could be one approach. Other approach could be that uh, as soon as the event comes and I uh, then I process them uh, you know individually. So uh, Spark takes the first approach. So Spark waits for 10 seconds, say 10 seconds and then all the events which has come as part of that 10 second it will take up those events and processes as part of one micro batch when i say micro batch it's a very small batch which runs after every 10 second so it gives the illusion to the user to the developer that everything is being processed in real time because there is a new batch being run every 10 seconds in this scenario you can change the timing of this batch as per your convenience. Okay. So the group that is being created, group of events that is being created at the end of every batch interval is called an RDD. That group is an RDD. So everybody knows from uh, knows RDD from the basics of RDD, Spark course that we have it have it on our channel. So uh, so you can think of it as a continuous stream of RDDs which are being generated every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, a new RDD is being generated. So this stream of RDDs is called the stream. Stream of events is being called stream. Continuous flow of events is being called stream. And stream of RDDs is called the stream. So the stream is a data structure or abstraction which Spark uses to process your events that are coming in. So uh, you can do all the operations that are that you do on RDD on DStream. So like uh, group by, reduce by, you know, map operation, all those operations you can do it on DStream. It is just a group of RDDs which are coming as part of stream. I hope this is clear. If it is not clear, please post it in the comment section. I'll definitely help you on this thing. Next very important concept is Spark Streaming context. I'll not uh, get into details of it, uh, but uh, I just wanted to introduce it as part of this video because uh, uh, before our next video, you should know what is Spark Streaming context. So like Spark context, Spark Streaming context is also our entry point to, uh, to our application. In this case, our application is a streaming application. So Spark Streaming Context is an application, streaming application entry point. So it manages your streaming application. So what it does is that uh, whatever code you want to run as part of processing your stream, it, it interacts to Spark Context and asks Spark Context to spin job task on your cluster on your executors and uh, uh, it talks to spark context on your behalf so it takes care of making 
for every RDD that is being generated as part of D stream, it takes care of uh, spawning those jobs through Spark context. So that's the role uh, Spark streaming context is playing here. Uh, if you are not clear on this thing, don't worry. Uh, you know, in next set of videos, uh, it will be more clear. Uh, as of now, you can just think of it as a broker between you uh, and the Spark context because there are a lot of RDDs which are coming as part of the stream. For each RDD, you want to spawn a job. So Spark streaming context is doing it for you uh, by interacting with uh, Spark context. I hope you enjoyed this video. As part of next video, we are going to do a Hello World program. We'll see how to create a basic streaming application. Uh, I hope you will, are enjoying uh, the content of this series. Please subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends. Thank you.